Hey everyone, my name is Jason, I'm a community manager at Coffee Stand Studios, and today we're going to be doing another one of those dev vlog thingies. Today we're going to be meeting up with our technical artist, Ben Dehulu. Welcome, Ben. Hello. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Like Everyone's always really bit busy, so it's really nice when they take some time to prepare some demos and some information to share with you all. Uh, so thanks a lot, Ben, for, for with your pleasure. time. With pleasure. So what is a technical artist in general? Um, it's the glue between the tech and the art. It's easily really? set. Yeah. Um, so technically, I work with the programmers to make sure the art works correctly in the uh -huh. game. So yep. it runs, it looks good, it looks correct, um, it functions, uh, and those kind of things. Mm. Okay. So, like, I, I guess uh, it, it is pretty easy to sort of overlook that kind of role because it's easy for programs to just do one thing and then artists to just make their stuff. And then it's, it is pretty easy to just put them together. But there's a difference when you have someone who knows what they're doing in that space in between, right? Yeah, it's um, uh, really a make or break, uh, which is a big case with our project. Right. Yeah, this wouldn't have worked at all without a technical artist. It's not satisfactory. Yep. It's too big and complex. It's, you know, it sounds kind of abstract, -y, I, I guess, but you have some demos for us today, so hopefully yes. that will help. I'll start with the water. Uh, something that's been really ancient in our project and we're planning to redo for a long, long while. So here is, is something called a material on a pretty basic shape, which makes this um, plane turn into a waterfall. Combined with VFX made by Simon. Simon? The Simon. Um, one of good. our issues is that our waterfalls just, they look kind of crappy. They just yeah. look like some planes that are moving. Yeah, like some old school 2004 yeah. waterfalls. Yeah. Um, but that looks like awesome. Holy holy shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's still work in progress, so it's subject to be changed. Uh, the yep. VFX needs some polishing. We want some more splashes on the top. Um, yeah. Make it feel a bit more. Uh, voluminous. Yeah, it, it, and it already does like a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it so far. Yeah. And Damn. next to that, it's the rivers. So we're also redoing all the rivers. Uh, currently, they look a bit samey. Uh -huh. You cannot really tell much from it. It just looks a bit boring. They don't have fancy reflections like they have now. Yep. So all our water surfaces are going to have screen space reflections which is going to look juicy. Oh, that's nice there. You can see it. Yeah. Yep. And also Good I waterfall. added some additional functionality to it for the gameplay mm -hmm. for the level designers. So I added functionality in uh, C++ that they can scale. And then the water gets Whoa. calm. So they can just change how... how is, is that like per spline or per point? Yeah, it's per, it per, per point. Cool. So it can be like busy at the beginning. Nice, nice, nice. Yep. Um, and the additional feature with that is, I need to go in game for that. I'm totally not cheating. It's, um, Hacks. still a bit laggy. It's that the player is being pushed. So oh, okay. We have flow rate. Oh, there we Damn. go. Damn! Dude, that's so use. cool! Yeah, definitely. You can also use it as a gameplay element, so if you have a hawk near you, you just yeah. jump, and it will go into the water, get drifted off. <laughs> uh, which I'm going to show with our beautiful best friends here. <laughs> oh, no. I was wondering why you weren't showing us what was going on at top. <laughs> no. I, I made it maybe a bit too much, but there we go. No, I think it's fine. <laughs> this guy just saw his friends, and there's two of them just get murdered. Whee. Well, they lucked out. They did not luck out. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's something I've been working on. Uh, it's a fun thing. Cool. Uh, could could you one. give us a, a closer, just like a clear look at the screen space reflections? Because some folks may not know them. So, uh, so if we, yeah, if we could sort so of this get some good the examples. Lake. The lake is also being revamped. Uh, I so wanted to make it calm. Yep. So you can see the rocks reflecting yep. in the water. And the screen space, screen space reflections are yes. uh, much more efficient to, yeah. to render out than There are some issues with it, like in the bottom uh -huh. of the screen they will disappear because it doesn't know what to reflect. Uh, um, because it's screen space. Yeah. 
but it's way cheaper than than, than things like RTX or any other yeah. way to do it. Yeah, that's fair enough. So yeah, that's the water. We are also gonna have some fancy caustics on the bottom of the water. Maybe hard to see. Uh, but what yeah. are they? The caustics. It's like um, what you have in the swimming pool. Those reflections on the bottom of the water. Oh of yeah, the right. Surface. Those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, also yeah, here. yeah. Oh, dude, that's so cool. So yeah, it's so much love into the water. Just wanna oomph it up a bit. So when is this being released? This is with the fluids this, update or? No, this or? is going to be with the, the world update when we're going to do a big push on the world. So this okay. is going to be slowly added from region to region. Okay. Uh, it'll right, take right. some so time. Take some time. Okay. Can you go give us like a super close up to the uh, waterfall? I want to see like how chunky it is. That's chunky. Yeah. So wait, so before it was, I, I, uh, sorry, I, I zoned out like earlier, uh, but this is still the same kind of plane, right? But you did the manipulation uh, of the versus no, or no? It's a bit more fancy. It has way yeah. more geometry now. Can I find the old one quickly? Probably cannot. Uh, maybe this. Yeah, this this was a part of our old waterfall. I see. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I can't find all of them anymore, but that's yeah. Right. Cool. And what are these big white boxes? When are they coming out? Right now. Hey! Wow, that was a joke, actually. But that worked out really <laughs> nice. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is also materials. So also mm -hmm. shaders. Um, with update 3, we used some less skeletal meshes because they're... Uh, animated mesh because they're relatively expensive, yep. uh, hard to deal with. So since we're going to have a lot of pumps and flow indicators, we, we wanted to experiment with putting it in the material instead. So okay. everything is driven by mathematics. Um, oh, damn. So yeah, there's no animations built in, like nope. no animator went in and did anything. So this is how it looks like as colors. Mm -hmm. So the, the blue controls how much it bounces. So where it's blue, it doesn't bounce that much. Where it's not, where it's black, oh, it will bounce. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then the so, so I feel like I feel like this concept here makes sense to me, but it might not make much sense to a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. So, so just to sort of break it down, the way that you're going to be breaking up these colors here, when you say that the blue part that they can see is that's just a marker for the material, right? That yes. says when it's blue, I want all the blue parts to bounce on the actual animation. Yes. Right. Definitely. So then you've got red and green as well. Yeah, red and green is for the, the pistons to know yep. which one is which one. Right, right. So when those colors change, then the uh, the uh, position of things or yep. whatever changes. Uh, if we quickly jump into the instance. Yep. We have a lot of settings to play with, so... Uh, Ooh, settings! <laughs> can increase the flow rate. That should never go <laughs> above one. <laughs> Seems so, fine. Uh, or uh, it can uh, increase the impact, as you can see, it's like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Bounce even higher, harder. Yep. Reduce it. Or increase the expo uh, exponent, so it, like, hits harder. Yep. Instead of slower. Because this is this is a bit boring, right? Where it's just... Right, right. Perfectly straight. And now it's just riven. Yep. Uh, ease in. It's more like, yeah, more yeah. impact. It looks like it's being yep. slammed in, as opposed to smoothly going, being yeah. pushed in. That's definitely what we wanted here. Yep. We can uh, make them go at the same time. Are you able to change any of the colors in real time? Oh, that's pretty cool. The colors? No, they yeah, are yeah, the baked on the mesh. Or do you okay. mean the water here? No, no, I meant those other colors. So you could like maybe make other parts of it pump when it shouldn't. Uh, like, no. If the body was green, that would be pretty funny. But <laughs> yeah. That's uh, the downside of it, that it is like yeah. baked into the mesh uh, for yeah. efficiency. Yeah, well, I, that's not too bad. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to do what I suggested anyway. <laughs> so it's, well. a, it's a fair trade off. Yeah, and then uh, we can change the direction it moves. Oh, well. Seems fine. Perfectly fine. <laughs> this, this stuff never breaks. <laughs> yeah, never. That's really cool. Okay, so that so we're basically shaving off uh, a complete animation. Yep. 
and we can do that for other things as well. And that's per instance of every pump. Yep, per instance of nice, every pump. Nice, nice. So that's... Uh... So now it's just three st uh, static meshes instead of three skeletal meshes that needs to be ticked, yep. uh, like updated by the game, and uh, that yep. would just cost so much performance. Yeah. So skeletal meshes are often used for, I guess when they say skeletal, then they've got bones, etc. Yep. So like the character or the hogs, where they actually have little pieces of them that are like moving in specific ways. Mm -hmm. So this is like a definitely a great candidate to, yep. to get rid of all that uh, unnecessary stuff. So the next one is... Uh, What's the next one, Ben? That's the hypertube support. I'm not sure if oh many boy. people notice this, but when the player gets close, it opens. Yeah. Ah. So that allows the player through. Like in camera shutter. Yeah, the aperture. Yeah. So uh, Was it not like that before? It always was like that. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. I'm just curious if people even noticed it. <laughs> All right. it's such Leave a it in the thing. comments below if you noticed. I think I noticed. And also the lights turn green when you get close. Oh, I didn't notice the lights turn green. Which is also driven by vertex colors, as you can see here. Um, so every segment has a color, which allows me to figure out which ID it is. Right. Uh, and that way I can move it into the right direction at the right time. Right. Can you close it again? I just want to take another look at it. Okay. So, so each one of those little pizza slices have an ID, and yep. then you just can manually control each one to go into a specific direction and yep. or location and rotation, I guess. But let's see what this parameter does. I think we can. Yeah, we can offset it. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Ooh. So we can control how it behaves. Just like how it would be with a camera. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one, another one of them. And then uh, one the players are going to look a lot at, the flow indicator. Mm -hmm. Which is was a really challenging one because it was really hard to also do it design-wise. Uh, like the to figure out what to do at all. Yeah. Be yeah. Because it was like, uh, how do we tell how full it is? How do we right. tell which direction it moves? How do we tell yeah. how fast it moves? Mm -hmm. So all those questions had to be answered. Um, so if we take the, Pretty efficient design. The, flay, uh, the flow rate. Mm -hmm. Here we can see, it goes that direction. And... In the code, it changes the direction negative if it goes the other way. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's that's how we opted it for it. And if it would flow less, mm -hmm. the rings just expand less. Uh, like. Okay. <laughs> so this is, is this also just kind of like done with math? Then you're just taking the mesh yes. and moving it and uh, scaling it a little. Yeah, okay. So it's all just That's really mesh. cool. It uh, works. It's like in between these, so uh, here you can see the mesh with the colors. Let's go in oh, yep, yep. color mode. So the red and green is the, the, the side, how far it should be moved out, which ones should be moved out when the content increases. Right. And then um, every segment of the ring has an ID in their color. That's yep. why the color difference is slightly different, each of them. It's hard to see, but you have to trust me on this one. <laughs> um, sure. And then it just uh, adjusts it based on uh, the input that it gets from the programmers. Yep. So this is why you pay attention in math class, so that you, when you make pipes... I'm, I'm terrible at math. Game. <laughs> are you actually? Yes. <laughs> well, there you are. Don't pay attention to math class. It doesn't matter. He just goes to uh, Google and looks for the solutions. So. Yes. Google Go to stackoverflow.com and be like, how do I do this? And someone's like, gosh! Uh, ironically, most of the answers I find on the Unity forms. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> there you are. Even though uh, we are using Unreal, but the uh, math is universal anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one that I just thought of uh, is something I hope people noticed. It's the grass. The grass also uses vertex animation for the wind. Um, Ooh. so maybe people notice it from update 2 to update 3, the grass kind of changed yeah. how it moved. 
It is floating, so that looks about the same. <laughs> yeah, depends where you are. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we, we increased the, the visible fidelity of the grass, how they should behave. So here, let, let's just make them really wavy. So we increased uh, the wind direction. Uh, particle effects also have it. Damn. But the problem is that we don't rotate the wind at all right now, so you don't ever see the difference. <laughs> right, right. Um, we have a nice data asset for that, uh, where we can change the wind direction. And then weather. That's what I called it because I was innocent and I believed that I could do more in little time. Um, here, here's the direction. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> so let's uh, let's rotate it. And now the wind is flowing this direction. To the left. Uh... And now the other direction. Oh, uh, so cool. And now it goes nowhere. <laughs> Yay! So, yeah, yeah, it'll be mu it'll be much cooler once like this becomes um, more dynamic in terms of the direction. And then we go to the next thing. So optimization. So. Technically, vertex animations is a form of optimization you've been doing. Mm -hmm. But the other thing, which is definitely not in yet, uh, I hope I can push this with update 4, is uh, I, I made... Uh, I mean, that's amazing. Beautiful I want, that, that looks like a That looks like a, a plushie, honestly. <laughs> it kind of does. I want to squeeze it. So uh, currently, our people with poor GPUs are kind of crying out for better optimizations. Uh, which is totally legit to ask for because we yeah. we have a lot of things that we didn't optimize yet. So yeah. uh, as it is now in the live build, we don't have imposters for meshes. So an imposter is something that should represent, but it is not the same. Yeah, uh, it, it's a form of loading, a uh, level of detail. So okay. what you would do on a distance, you would um, I'll, I'll show it with the constructor. Can of course force that. So this is the first lot, and you get further away. This is the second lot, as you can see, details got reduced. Then yeah. the third lot, where um, it became a beautiful mess. Yeah. And then the fourth lot, where it even became a more beautiful mess. And then at one point, it just becomes this really simple shape yeah. uh, that should represent the same mesh. Yeah. And so this changes as you move further and further away. Yeah. So you shouldn't tm notice you shouldn't uh yeah <laughs> but you will notice the performance increase yeah uh we noticed some gpu gains uh on yeah. it which was good to see okay so that was loading that you just demonstrated yeah. so then what are these imposters then so imposters is technically just the last lot only then extremely simplified okay uh so it just it's almost a box like yeah the storage container is a box. Oh, okay so th so those just the really really low quality ones they're considered they're called imposters, imposters. yeah and okay. uh, on the distance you cannot see if it's the last lot or first lot really so that's the idea behind it it's like do okay. you do you see a difference between this until you zoom in yeah yeah right 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 oh that's really cool and uh, as oh, you can, damn, as that's... you can see of the geometry uh it's holy shit wow can you just zoom in on that a little closer? Folks at home, playing along at home, can uh, notice the difference in the uh, mesh. So you can see the complexity there. Uh, a lot less polys yep. on something that you uh, can hardly make out anyway in the distance. Yep. <laughs> and another scalability feature I've been working on, which is I might be able to finish before update 4, is uh, yep. factory render distance. So it can mm -hmm. stop rendering factories on distance for people that have lower spec computers okay. and don't really care about it, but it's an opt-in, so you don't yeah. have to use it. Right, right. So that's one of the things I also have been working on. So they just straight up disappear? Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay. Which is better for the computer yeah. to deal with, obviously. Yep. And then we have our lovely manufacturer here. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> it looks so fucking stupid. Yep, but it works. <laughs> but it works. It works great. Yeah, from far away. Yep. So yeah. And yeah. also, uh, what we do is remove the skeletal mesh at distance. Ah. Oh, so yeah, we that have makes it sense. here modeled in as uh, I believe Simon made those in the past. Yep. 
and it uh, like it represents it. It works on the distance. Yeah. The player will yeah. don't notice it. Yeah, definitely. So yes, that's that's imposters. Yeah. Very cool. The things you should never see. Yep. And then uh, we go to the the real question that uh, I have answered a uh, uh, tons of times on the QA site: is the level streaming. Level streaming. Tell us about it. Our world is chunked up into a lot of separate uh, pieces because otherwise your memory would die. Like yeah. it, it's just too much memory. Um, for fun, I can can show you some tell how how much it can be in memory. Uh, let's go to the middle of the world. So uh, here, here we go. Okay, this what the is fuck the is memory going on here? footprint. Uh, let, let's go to the, the right view. <laughs> All right. It's uh, Unreal is uh, dying on it. So this is all the memory that is on Tal y, uh, X3, Y3. That I think is the Titan Forced. Okay, so it says at least 1.5 gig in memory yes. right now. So on when one tile. Yeah, so when you stream it in, it checks what's already exists in the world. Right. And skips that. And then it loads in the data that's still uh, needed. Um, that's pretty cool. One uh, thing to note here is like, we have 101 megabytes in the world itself. And that means all the foliage that's painted and objects uh, that are placed. So that's, that's the big boy fits. right there. Yep. Yeah, if we can cut that down a little. And so how many tiles do we have? Uh, 30, somewhere 36, I think. 32, right. 36. Yeah, and of course they're not all 1.5 gig at least, but but still, if you had them all loaded in, yeah, uh, and that would just be the maps only, not anything else to do with the game. <laughs> yes, just the world. Yeah. So uh, th this is the the tile that I talked about. So as you can see, it's just a chunk of the world. This should not yep. be there. <laughs> see, that's how you fix things. <laughs> yeah, just delete it. That shouldn't be there. Bye. I didn't delete it. I hit it. <laughs> But yeah, so here you can see it's a chunk of the world uh, that will be loaded in when you get near. Yep. And one thing we're going to do to optimize it uh, for the players, so it's going to be less uh, less terrible for them, is gonna, yep. we're going to split it up. So we're going to have, instead of one tile, we're going to have four tiles for those. Uh, that way, oh, wow, okay. That way the, the, the computer needs to only stream in a quarter of the data. Right. So it's going to be much, much faster. So how does that work then? Like, are we just going to quadruple the number of tiles we have? Or is it yes. going to be... Okay, so we're just going to add more tiles. That's it. There's nothing particularly fancy. It's no. just more. It's just manual labor. Yep, okay. Uh, to an extent. If you were to, to, to decide what area of the game that you can optimize, because just optimizing like anything doesn't necessarily give you good results, right? You need mm -hmm. to find like an optimal thing to optimize to get the most returns. Yes. So how do you uh, decide what to do? And how do you find areas of the game that are uh, easily optimized for the best gains? Yeah. Um, so what we do for optimization, we have an automated profile running every night mm -hmm. and every branch that's uh, actively being worked on. I guess I can show that. So we have our beautiful sheet of curves here. Hope OB, uh, I hope Shadowplay is picking it up. <clears throat> Either way, we have uh, profiles. So on camera goes through the world, uh, mm -hmm. capture the stats, and then gives me a report back. It's like, oh, this region is now twice as expensive. Time to right. annoy Hannah about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or what are you doing, Hannah? Why are you 500 rocks here? Yeah. So Is, um, is Hannah the, the first go-to? Is she the person you often go to first for uh, optimization? For, for world, yes. Uh, either oh, yeah. Hanna or Michiel. We have a new yeah. level designer now okay. helping Hanna. So I, I would every day wake up, brush my teeth, look at the stats. Blame uh, Hanna. <laughs> blame Simon. And then um, <laughs> I'll go into the, the world, check out what's going on, and then yeah. give feedback and hope it improves. Uh, yeah. That's for the world. For factory, it's it's a difficult one because it's skills. Like we have people that built 300 refineries, and we have people that just built 10 of them. 
Right. So we need to think for the, the, the average player what they would do. Yeah. So um, let, let's take anything. Uh, what, what, what building do you want to see? I want to see... Yeah, sure, refinery. Let's go with refinery. This is the new mesh, I believe, even. <gasps> but I think it's going to be out already. So okay. we have the beautiful refinery here. So um, the first thing I always do, I'm on top of development when they are making the meshes. Um, I give them a budget they can work with. So it's yep. never going to be overly expensive or out of the norms. Yeah, budget as in like what, like poly count? And yeah, the poly count, else? the the triangles. Yeah. Um, if they can use baked textures, because we have two ways of texturing. Uh, yeah. Our models are awfully aware of that. They they yeah. use our factory material, which looks amazing. Uh, I love it to see it. So we have the factory material, and we have baked materials that we can use. Yep. Um, what are what are baked materials? So. Baked materials, you may make a relatively high resolution version of the mesh. Uh -huh. And then you have a low resolution version of the mesh. Yep. And then you project the, the geometry onto the texture. Let's say that way. So you bake down how the light should react to the geometry. Right. So is it like you... You gather all the lighting information or whatever off the high res mesh. Yes. And convert that down into a texture and then yes. you slap it on the low res mesh. So it looks like it has all the lighting information. Yes. But it doesn't. That's how it works indeed. Yep. It's simplified. Um, so if the art is fine, then I go to the build part. Yep. And that's the, the place where things are, are often going wrong. Um, why people are also getting the out of object uh, crash. Okay. Um, for example, here we have three ladders. So every refinery is going to have three ladders on there. So if you right. build 300 refineries, you're going to have 900 ladders on there. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Um, so that's how it can easily go up to uh, insane amounts of objects. Right. Uh, then we have clearance lags and things we need to have. Um, and then often it's like, okay, do we need this on the distance, like the skeleton mesh? Do mm -hmm. we remove it uh, on the distance? Like, yeah, after 3,000 units, we remove it. 3,000? Yep. Can I read? 30? 30,000, yes, I cannot read. And that way, um, I make sure buildings are optimized. Are there any other buildings? Like, a lot of people have asked, like, what buildings sh or things should we stay away from to minimize our object limit? Um, uh, object count so that we don't hit the object limit. Are there any, do you have any answers to that? Is there anything in particular that is problematic for that that issue? It's a tricky one because, um, the, ironically, the one of the bigger offenders are the constructors. Okay, yeah. Because they have, um, in the game version, they have a plane in front and in the back and then in the inside there and also in the back here so they have like four okay. objects just for planes that make it look fancy um and then they have okay. also leather and skeletal yada yada so constructors are one of the bigger offenders in object count uh, but you yep. cannot avoid building constructors yeah so is so, that something that we might look into like prioritize then or it's something oh. i'm looking in right now Okay. That's my current cool. task. Uh, it's getting along. I think we can get rid of all of them so people can build uh, hundreds and hundreds of more of them. <laughs> and then they hit the object limit again. Yes, that's going to happen anyways. People can build yeah. as much as they want. We don't want to limit that either way. Yeah, by the way, that object limit, if you're hitting it, that's not us. We didn't We didn't choose it. We can't just be like, you can make more now. So um, are you able to explain that? or? Um, it is modifiable. You can modify okay. it yourself, uh, but we are not fully aware of the risks of increasing that. I noticed more crashes on saves that increase it. Okay. Um, so if it already increases the chances for crashes, I don't want to have it as a setting in the game. Because if we enable it as a setting in the game, it means we support it. It means that we should also take care of those crashes. So it's not fully supported by us, but if you want to do it, 
there is a means to change that limit in a config file. Maybe I can put that config file directory kind of thing in the description below. Yes, uh, we can do I'll that. Try, I'll try to do that. Yeah, I'll try to do that so that you can find that if you hit that limit, you can change it. But make backups of your saves and shit, whatever. Make sure you don't lose your progress. Yes. Um, at your own risk. At your own risk. Uh, okay, cool. So we'll wrap this up. Thanks again, Ben. I hang out on Discord. So I look into the satisfactory chat from time to time and answer or help people if, ne if needed. And otherwise, so, you can also find me, find me on the modding Discord. There we are. So we'll uh, add links to uh, to that as well, um, to the Discord, which is already down there, discord.gg slash satisfactory. Um, and then I'll put the uh, a link to the modding Discord as well that he's referring to. We don't have an official modding Discord, but the community has pretty much made uh, an official modding Discord, which is the place to go, basically. They are um, amazing. It's insane what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. It is crazy. Smash like if you enjoy devlog videos. Um, and if you liked Ben. So don't hit dislike mm. because then Ben's <laughs> value as a human being will decrease. And that'll be on you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, thanks again, Ben. And we'll catch everyone later. All right. Bye. Bye.